What's up guys, how's it going? My name is Randall. I'm a developer advocate here at Okta. We are a security company that allows you to store user accounts and handle authentication and authorization as a service. But today I wanna to talk to you about something completely unrelated to Okta's business, which is static sites versus content management systems. Now, basically, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're a developer of some sort, either a developer who's working on backend code of some sort, managing websites, uh, you probably have at least a little familiarity with tools like WordPress, Drupal, um, probably maybe a little bit of familiarity with static site generators as well. There's a really popular one called Jekyll. Hugo is another really popular one. In the Python world, there's something called Pelican. And we're going to get into all this. But basically, I've been developing websites over the last 15 years or so, and I've used a ton of different technologies to do it. I build things using essentially every popular CMS on the planet. I've also built and maintained a lot of websites, including many that I run today, using static site generators. And sorry, by the way, there's something in my eye. Um, but basically, over the years, I've developed some really strong opinions on what sort of technologies developers should use when they're building websites. And I wanted to sort of distill that down into this short video where I'm going to walk through all the pros and cons to each approach and why I think that if you are a developer and you are managing a website with a team of other developers, you really can't go wrong using a static site generator. I think that if you compare the two technologies together, static site generators versus content management systems, there's really no question in my mind that static site generators are the far superior option. So I'm just gonna walk through and sort of, you know, talk about it for a bit. Um, but first, let's define what each of those two things is. So first off, what is a content management system? What do, what do I mean when I'm using the, that word. Basically, when I'm talking about content management systems, I'm talking about services like or tools like WordPress and Drupal for the most part. These are basically big programs that you run on a server somewhere. They give you a nice web interface where you can go in, you can like edit pages, you can add pages, you can, if you're building a blog, you can create blog posts. WordPress powers a big majority of sites on the internet right now. It's extremely popular. Uh, so does Drupal. And so those are the two I'll sort of be referring to throughout the rest of this uh, presentation. Um, static site generators, on the other hand, are tools like Jekyll, Hugo, and Pelican. They are basically programs that a developer will run, which takes some, some text files and convert them into web pages. So there is no program that runs on a server that gives you a nice web UI or backend or anything like that. They don't need to be hosted any, anywhere. With a static site generator, you basically take your site's content in some plain text files, convert it into HTML, and then you literally take the static HTML pages and JavaScript and CSS and all that and upload it to a file server somewhere so that when people visit the file server there, they can see these pages. So it's just a much simpler uh, simpler way to build and, and manage websites. Um, there's a lot of benefits to both approaches. So for instance, content management systems, a lot of people prefer them because you get a nice web UI and a lot of people feel like that is worth it. Especially if you're in a team, for instance, where you have a lot of non-developers uh, contributing to the website. Like at a lot of companies, they have mainly marketing people managing their websites. In cases like this, using a CMS system would be appropriate, but that's not what we're talking about today. Um, what we're talking about today is if you're a developer and you're managing the website with a team of other developers, in that case, static site generators are probably going to be your best friend and we will get into why through this presentation. But hopefully that makes sense up front. So why are static sites the best? Well, first and foremost, static sites are fast. They are incredibly fast. As a matter of fact, if you build a static site, uh, you can basically guarantee it's going to be faster than any content management system on the face of the planet. And let's talk about why that is. Well, at a fundamental level, it's all about the deployment model. So static sites are basically, you, you have some source files, which are your, your pages written in plain text. You run a program and it compiles them into HTML. Then you take that HTML and you basically store it on a web server somewhere. Now, content management systems, on the other hand, are programs that actually are running all the time. So when a user makes a request to a web server to access like a, a blog post or something on a WordPress blog, that request is going to go to WordPress, which is going to be running some code. It's going to, you know, consume the request, say, hey, here's the page you're looking to do. It's going to render it, send it back to the user. Now, just the very fact that that WordPress system needs to be running at all times and processing incoming requests is going to add latency to each and every request. And so by the very definition of static sites versus content management systems, static sites are just a lot faster. 
Now there are some, some ways you can sort of speed both of these things up even more and you can sort of equalize things in some regards, but uh, I'll get into that later. Um, the next big argument and one of the big reasons why I really prefer static sites is that they are secure. And what do I mean by secure? Well, basically if you are to Google, if you went on Google and looked up Drupal hack, uh, WordPress hack, you will see millions, tens of millions of results. And the reason why is that for the most part, content management systems have abysmal security records. And this is, this is a fact. You can go check it out. I'm not sort of trying to berate them or anything. This is, it just is what it is. Uh, all the popular content management systems today are built in PHP, which uh, as many of you who have built software in PHP might know, uh, has a lot of really simple to, to exploit edge cases. So for instance, uh, not sanitizing input is something that's incredibly easy to do in PHP. There's a lot of other things which make it, in general, a lot more difficult to prevent security exploits against when you're building code than some other programming language and development frameworks. Um, so not only do WordPress and Drupal have really poor security records, but they're constantly getting exploited all the time. Um, just last week, a new Drupal hack came out that compromised several million websites, and there's still several million open websites on the internet right now that haven't been patched uh, you know, with the, the new upgrades to the system to help prevent the exploits. Um, furthermore, tools like Metasploit, which is a very popular exploit framework that allows you to basically run and test different exploits against services running on the web with the intent of compromising them, they basically download and archive all these exploits. So even really you know, novice script kiddies can go install Metasploit and compromise a lot of large Drupal and WordPress websites out there with very little effort and very little knowledge. So just something to think about. Uh, one of the reasons I'm really big on static sites, particularly here at Okta, is because we're a security company and our web brand is really, really important to us. And one of the ways that we can sort of protect ourselves and build secure websites and not need to worry about getting compromised is by just using static site generators. And the reason why static site generators are so much more secure is that there's no code running. So when you use a static site generator, it never runs in production. You basically run it to build your static site, your HTML, your CSS, and everything else. Then you upload that to a web server. And so unless someone actually roots your web server, which is very, very unlikely compared to rooting like a WordPress or Drupal instance, uh, you're basically safe to go. So next up, let's talk about developer friendliness. So again, all the advice I'm talking about today is really scoped to teams of developers who are building and managing websites. And one of the things that's important to keep in mind is if that is your scenario, if you are on a web team with other developers building and managing websites, you obviously want to use a tool that's going to be friendly for you and your coworkers to use. And static sites just so happen to be sort of the ideal tools in that regard. Um, they're really easy for developers to understand because all of the content that you build with static sites is just sitting in a plain text file somewhere. Usually it's like a markdown file, so you can have a page defined in markdown. You can easily go in there and edit it with any text editor. It's just very simple and straightforward. It's not a complex thing. Every part and component is really known. They're basic, they're also very minimalist, right? So static site generators, you write some markdown files, you run a command and it converts all the output into HTML. <laughs> And this is a pretty low barrier to entry. So anyone on your development team who wants to get into this or make changes or figure out how things work, they can easily go in, look at the documentation for let's say Jekyll or Hugo and figure out within a few minutes what they need to change and what they need to do to make something happen. And that's pretty powerful. They also allow, allow for a lot more editorial than you know systems like Drupal and WordPress do. Now I'm actually gonna talk about this a little later, so I'll skip it for now. But um, one of the things that, uh, you can do essentially is in easily insert things like code blocks, insert all sorts of other custom tags and things like that. There's tons of extensions for Jekyll, Hugo, Pelican that provide lots of supplemental functionality that you can easily configure and plug in. Uh, doing the same thing through WordPress and Drupal requires the use of plugins. A lot of them are paid. A lot of them have varying levels of support and documentation and varying levels of basically usability at all based on your versions of WordPress and Drupal. Uh, so that's another thing to consider. So next up, permissioning. So permissioning and per basically who who is allowed to, to edit your website? What pages are, are they allowed to edit? How do you sort of manage all these things? In systems like Drupal and WordPress, you basically have a built-in user model 
that allows certain people to access the web pages, manage things, uh, etc. With static site generators, on the other hand, you have no permissioning whatsoever. You're basically at the mercy of what you want to do with it. However, since most of us are using GitHub to manage our projects nowadays, you can essentially rely on GitHub's permissions or Bitbucket or GitLab or whatever your favorite Git hosting tool is to manage this for you. So what we do at Okta is we basically use Git permissioning, we use Git teams to, to basically dictate who can see our, our code and who can see our content, who can manage it, who can contribute to it. And then you can also allow, if your project is open source, third party developers to come in and suggest changes to your website, submit pull requests, and they can actually contribute without ever needing an account to access your stuff. And I think that's a really powerful tool, especially for people like us at Okta, where we are building websites that are publicly available, and we encourage community members to help us fix documentation, contribute to the projects, uh, and things like that. Next up is scalability. So scalability is, a, is another sort of interesting thing here. So as I mentioned before, CMS systems need to have a program running at all times in order to service incoming requests. Now, one of the great things about static sites is because you just have some static files sitting on a server, scaling it up is really, really easy. So you can basically just have a, a very large web server that you know, and typically what a lot of people do is they deploy the stuff on Amazon. So you will basically store your, your static site in Amazon S3, which is a file service. Uh, and you, it can be exposed as a web server. And that supports basically an infinite amount of requests and for very little money. So that's, that's a preferred way to do it. Whereas doing a similar thing on WordPress would require spinning up many, many, many actual web servers to run the WordPress instance, database servers, caching servers. It can be a lot more expensive a lot more management, especially in the DevOps type type space. And it's, it's basically just very difficult to manage. And going back to the security stuff from before, because these tools basically really need to be kept up to date to avoid being exploited because these things are constantly being compromised, uh, you can't really do this yourself anymore unless you have dedicated staff who are just sitting around and working on keeping the web servers up, scaling the WordPress instances, managing security for the instances, etc it's a lot better to sort of offshore this to big companies like Acquia is a big Drupal one. Um, Automatic is the WordPress company who provides WordPress hosting services. These are the only real options for companies building websites nowadays because there's so many problems doing this stuff yourself that it basically just makes it untenable. Next up, static sites are cheap. So I mentioned this before, but static sites, you literally just have HTML files, CSS, JavaScript images. So the cost that it costs you to run your website is really the cost of how much it costs to store that data and how, how many requests you're getting. So how, how much throughput do you need to support? Supporting something like that through Amazon with Amazon S3, Amazon CloudFront as a CDN is basically going to cost you pennies even to store gigabytes and gigabytes of data. It's ex extraordinarily inexpensive. Uh, WordPress, on the other hand, running all those instances and the database servers, like I mentioned before, the cost of that can add up to be thousands or tens of thousands of dollars a month. So um, I've worked at companies in the past where we've spent tens of thousands of dollars per month hosting Drupal and WordPress instances, and we could have easily hosted the same things from a static site point of view for dollars a month, you know, probably less than $10 a month. So the, the cost difference can also be astronomical. Um, static sites are also really easy to use. So again, I'm talking about for developers here, but one of the nice things about them is because all of your content is in plain text files, typically Markdown, there's not much of a learning curve. It's really easy, easy to figure out where things are. You'll typically have like a directory structure where you see something like a folder called posts or content. Inside of there, you'll have folders for like the, the year, the month, the day, or depending on how your site is segmented, you can change it up. But it's a very one-to-one -one type relationship, so it's very easy to just intuitively look in a project folder and figure out where you need to go to make changes to things. And I think that's pretty nice. The other really big benefit is editorial. So static sites provide a very in-depth editorial as a side effect of the way they work. So if you're using something like Drupal or WordPress to build and edit pages on your site or articles, you have a lot of limitations. So none of those systems by default support uh, you know, unlimited revision history. It, you need to install special plugins to figure out who changed what thing at what time and go back and see what has changed uh, versus using something like Git. So if you're using Git to manage your, your static site, you have a ton of options, right? Because Git is one of the most powerful editor, you know, editors on the planet. 
you can go back and see exactly what dates and times, what people changed, what parts of the site and what they changed. You can go back and revert problems. You can create tags, you can create branches, you can track who was working on what and what parallels, how these things line up together, in what ways they work together and things like that. It just gives you a lot more options for editorial than you have otherwise. Static sites are also really customizable. So with a static site generator like Hugo, you can customize basic, basically every aspect of what, what it does. You can customize how it generates your pages, how it translate the, translates the markdown into HTML. You can translate how it, you know, what it, or you can customize what it does with your images. You can specify translations. You can basically customize every single component down to the individual HTML tags that it is outputting. With WordPress and Drupal, on the other hand, in most CMS systems, this is not the case. So you have a plugin system you can use to build custom plugins to influence behaviors and modify things. But not only is the learning curve significantly higher for that, but you're still at the mercy of the core components of WordPress and Drupal to actually go in there and manage the, the lower level things. So for instance, if you wanted to replace all of your paragraph tags, just as an, as an example, with special HTML5 metadata tags that, you know, I don't know, embed some, some custom data attributes in those tags, that would be a very challenging thing to do. However, doing the same thing with Hugo or Jekyll would be not very difficult at all. Also, depending on your company culture or whatever the project or the culture of the project that you're working on is, but ownership can be a really, really nice benefit. So at Okta, we are a tech company and a lot of our business is driven through our website, our developer blog and things like that. Us having direct control over that part of the, the company and over that part of our, our user experience is really, really important to us. We really want to hold on to the ability to change this stuff as we need to. If we want to redesign and then customize all the way the tags are generated, we want to be able to do that. These are things that are just a lot easier to do with static sites than they are with content management systems. And because we're the ones owning the code base and sort of keeping things up to date and you know ch changing it as we need to, it gives us a lot more flexibility than using a content management system where we would need to go through contractors and hosting companies and it can just be quite difficult. You know, I think there's a saying where they say, uh, you should outsource everything your that in your company that isn't your core business. And that way you can focus more on your core business. And for us, our website is our core business. And so for us, this is a big part of our company. We want control over it and it just sort of makes sense. Uh, next up, static sites are really portable. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's say you have a static site. What that means is all of your content, all of your pages are in plain text files, marked down in a folder somewhere on your computer. This is really powerful because if I end up, you know, deciding to move our company from Jekyll to Hugo or from Jekyll to any other type of platform, all of my website content is already in just plain text files. That's that makes it really easy to migrate to another system. Even if I were to migrate us to WordPress or Drupal or any other content management system there, I guarantee you I can find ways to copy Markdown into these platforms and make it happen. Unfortunately, the opposite isn't really true. So when you're using content management systems, the way they typically work, this is true of WordPress and Drupal, is when you edit content inside of these systems, they are saving this content into a database and is gonna be compiled as HTML. And so if you want to extract that out, you need to figure out all the different places where your content is stored, how it's related to other pieces of content in the database. You need to extract it out in HTML and then figure out how to transmorph it back into the original document that was created, like the markdown type thing. Um, it can just be a lot more problematic and a lot more challenging. So going from static site to content management system is quite easy. Going the other way, not so easy. Next up, let's talk about just reliability in general. So static sites have a lot of tools and there's a lot of things you can do just through the power of scripting to make them particularly automated and reliable. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're writing articles on the blog. You could easily run a link checker on all of your generated files to make sure that all the links that you put in your blog posts are working valid links. Doing the same thing through WordPress would actually be pretty challenging. You'd have to go out, find a plugin, make sure it's working. Uh, a lot of the times you may need to write your own code, so write your own plugins to go through and do these sorts of custom behaviors. Uh, some other stuff we do at Okta is automatically find broken images and image links. Um, run some tests to assert that our UI is working as expected and it renders properly in a browser. Doing these things with a CMS would be very custom and very brittle and would be likely to break in future updates. So just a quick summary, uh, static sites are more secure than content management systems. 
Uh, developers enjoy using them. They're faster than content management systems. They're easy to use for development teams, even with only a little bit of technical expertise. Uh, they scale with zero effort. They cost exponentially less money to operate. They require minimal maintenance effort because you don't need to manage servers or anything like that. They have a really positive reputation in the developer community and they basically allow you to own your projects and build a strong uh, collaborative team. Uh, they support more advanced and useful editorial features than content management systems do. They enable anyone in your company to just send a pull request and contribute to the blog, documentation, website, whatever you have. And so you can leverage this to sort of expand out a bit. Um, and finally, if you do decide to move to content management system in the future, it's really easy to port away from, uh, from static site generators. So that's all I really wanted to say. I would love to know what you think. Please leave a comment below. I know it's sort of an inflammatory topic, but uh, it's a fun one. And thank you. See ya.